because you are that, you are capable. You are gifted, and you are so unique. All of the things that you may hate about yourself are your strengths. It's okay to be soft. It's okay to be opinionated. It's okay to be different. And it's so okay to just be. The world awaits to receive you. Bitch, I'm back. I'm popular the man. Yes, who's back? Yes, yes, yes. You see, I, I came in a le- little less aggy this year. I'ma come in and say, my, my, my. This one really hitting me. We're going to talk about the migrant issue. And the reason why it hit me, because this is hitting us like a pandemic. They are taking the same route to accommodate the migrants as they accommodated COVID. Let's make it make sense, okay? New York High School students forced into remote learning as 2,000 migrants shelter in their school. Did y'all know that this was going on? We already knew that they took over police stations in New York, causing the issue when it comes to safety and regulation and opened the pathway for them to become officers. Do you remember in the conspiracy world? But look what they're doing. Look what's happening to our kids. I can't say what they're doing. It's what the system is allowing. So when I put that video out there, is this migration or uh, infiltration? Doesn't make sense. Let's go. 912 right now in a news alert out of New York City. Students are being forced to learn online as nearly 2,000 migrants move into their school. Nate Foy is live in Brooklyn with the latest with what's going on. Nate, what, what can you tell us about this? Uh, well, good morning. I can tell you that a couple state assemblymen and concerned parents just spoke moments ago, and they are very upset that the students at this school, 3,600 students, are learning remotely today because of those nearly 2,000 migrants uh, that moved in last night at the city's uh, direction. Those migrants, because the weather is a bit better today uh, than it was last night, have since been moved back to their tent facility. That happened at 4.30 this morning, but the impact continues for the students today. They're learning remotely. All sports practices have been canceled. And we just heard from concerned parents saying that some teachers aren't even showing up for the remote learning sessions. So they say uh, that this really is not a situation that they're comfortable with. But take a look at this video as you see those 2,000 migrants arrive here last night. Again, it was because of bad weather threatening their nearby tent facility. The school notified parents of the students. The city is the coldest winter ever. We was wondering when Biden, the darkest and coldest winter ever, when it's coming, something is happening this winter. It is literally 10 degrees, 20 degrees out here in Atlanta. Okay? Never did I ever see it in my life. Never in my life. And I've been here for over nine years. Writing, quote, the health and safety of migrants in our care is always a top priority, which is why we are currently overseeing the relocation of 1,900 guests from the Humanitarian Emergency Response and Relief Center at Floyd Bennett Field. That relocation is forcing students to again learn at home, a proven disaster for learning, as we saw during COVID. Florida Governor and Presidential hopeful Ron DeSantis spoke about this last night. Listen here. Government is commandeering Fire this motherfucker. the school to house illegal aliens. And now Ron DeSantis going, he going to ride this because he like freedom. I, I appreciate it. He be saying certain things, but other things, you know, he don't like black people too much. But with that goes to say, I support this right here. This just this. So the migrants now are back at Floyd Bennett Field, but many are wondering uh, for how long. Of course, we're in the middle of winter here in New York City. We just had a nor'easter over the weekend, and harsh conditions are expected, uh, you know, throughout the winter. So people are concerned that this could happen again, not only at this school, but in other districts across New York, which is why uh, these two assemblymen who are not part of this district are here speaking today, and they 
say that they're drafting legislation to prevent the city from housing migrants in active schools. New York City Mayor Eric Adams wow. says the city is full. Uh, of course, you guys are running into similar. Let's stop right here. Now you hear other states and cities are starting to put in legislation to stop this from happening. You better write to your local congressman and representative and let them know this could have been something indefinite to happen. What do they think that was going to happen when you sent a bunch of migrants in from a warmer part of kind climate into America right before the winter time? Okay, into New York. It's cold. It's freezing in some of these states where they are at. And then um, all of a sudden, now you're saying your top priority is the migrants. So 2,000 migrants can actually displace 3,600 children in their learning. And I will say, I always push homeschool, homeschool, like it's all good, it's all easy. That shit is hard, okay? Especially when you're trying to teach these type of kids. I, I already told y'all about my homeschool experience and how I had high blood pressure and everything. So about time when COVID came, I already had a heads up. We were already in the groove. Thank you, Jesus, because these motherfuckers gave me a headache, and they still are. So doing homeschool is not for everybody. You have to have the will. You have to have the determination and the time. You have to change your schedule and everything. I work overnight. I've been doing that since my kids been born because I knew I wanted to be part of their day life. This was something I had to make the sacrifice. Everybody can't work overnight. And then you're going to tell me that you're going to pull these kids out of a New York school to homeschool and online schooling like it's a damn pandemic. Yes. Is this migration again or is it an invasion? This is ridiculous. These people are going to get upset. And this upsetness, let's listen to this. Okay? I'm not saying this is a migrant. But this is a story in New York. New York migrant shelter stabbing leaves one unalive. Let, what's going on? It's getting a little hot and heavy out there in New York. Didn't I tell you it was going to start going down? It's going to be balanced. With poverty comes balance. These people are going to, they have obligations or theories in their heads of how things are supposed to be when they get here. And shit is not like that, motherfucker. Now, it's okay when two, one or two or three or four of them figure out that shit as they get here. Like, my ancestors and shit. Like, damn, we thought we was going to come here chilling niggas working 30 jobs for one piece of chicken. But it's one or two of us. When you have a whole mass of people come in, desperate, the system is overflow, people are outside in the cold when they could have been outside at home in their own warm conditions, that's where you get balance. Let's listen. For, for migrants, after a man was stabbed to death at the migrant listen. safety concerns tonight, for, for migrants, after a man was stabbed to death at the migrant shelter on Randall's Island, and two other migrants were arrested in a separate incident. Thank Fox you. So don't say it's a safety for migrants, issue for migrants, but two other migrants was arrested in a separate incident. You, you see, listen to that sh double talk. Two other migrants was arrested for some shit. But then this one, we gotta, we, we fear for our migrants. Baby, get it together. It's five, Stephanie Bertini has more. A police presence outside the migrant shelter on Randall's Island isn't helping some feel safer after a fatal stabbing. When I returned, the first thing I heard, the comments they were saying was a murder, says this asylum seeker from Venezuela who has been staying here for about a month. Tu tienes miedo? I asked if she's afraid. She responded every day because here it's not safe. The NYPD responded to a 911 call just after 7.30 Saturday evening. Police say a man in his 20s was stabbed in the chest. He was taken to a hospital where he died. A male suspect is in police custody. Investigators say it started with a dispute inside the cafeteria at the shelter. According to officials, over 68,300 asylum seekers are in New York City shelters. The numbers evidence of New York City's ongoing migrant crisis. Shelters have been operating at capacity. So much so, city-imposed limits remain on shelter stays. 30 days for singles and 60 days for families. The former St. Bridges School on the Lower East Side now functions as a shelter re-entry facility. This is where migrants go to be assigned 
to a new shelter once their stay is up. Police were called after an altercation this weekend. It all started, according to witnesses, with someone cutting the line. No respect la fila. No hacer fila. No hay... They don't respect the line. They don't want to wait in the line. So that's why the problem, he said. The NYPD says it led to two officers sustaining minor injuries and two migrants getting arrested. They are now facing a string of charges, including resisting arrest. Mayor Adams recently commented about migrants committing crimes in the city. You place a person in an environment where they can't work, can't provide for themselves, they have to just sit around all day, that's not a good scenario. The overwhelming majority... Don't make excuses, though, motherfucker. motherfucker. Somebody letting all them in, creating this. Don't make excuses. The majority of migrants in our care came to our city in search of a better life and the American dream. The small number of those disrupting that journey for the rest of the migrants in our care by acting violently will face enforcement to the fullest extent of the law. According to officials, more than 160,000 migrants have come to New York City since last spring. As the surge continues with no end in sight, the question is, will these incidents be on the rise? Reporting in Midtown Manhattan, and I'm Stephanie Bertini, Fox 5 News. Now, we're not going to play this full thing Listen right up. here, but they said that these migrants got a 60-day limit. Where the fuck they going in 60 days? Excuse me. Where? Listen to this. To reapply for their housing as the 60-day deadline set by Mayor, Mayor Eric Adams approaches. That's right. Fox 5's Briella Tomasetti joins us live from the Roosevelt Hotel Migrant Intake Center in Midtown with more. Briella, what's going on? Yeah, Dan and Tashani, good morning to both of you. So essentially this will affect the first wave of migrants staying in the city's shelter system. Mayor Adams implemented that 60-day limit for migrants with children back in October. So technically that would have expired in December, but the city extended the deadline until after the holidays. Nearly 70,000 asylum seekers are currently packed into city shelters with... Can you see how dirty New York is? It's just like dirty Jersey. It's filthy. It looks so nasty when the snow is melting. I'm just sorry. Hundreds more continuing to arrive each week. And now scores of families are in jeopardy of losing their emergency housing arrangements because their 60-day shelter limit is set to expire tomorrow. It's a strange environment. More than 162,000 migrants Damn, have oh my God, that's how New York look? I know this place. That This look like up there by, um, um, up in Brooklyn. This looked like up in Brooklyn by the Brooklyn Library up by uh, Flatbush. I hope this not it. Look at the obelisk. You see that? Shit. 2,000 migrants. It's a cactus obelisk have passed through the city since spring of 2022. In October, Mayor Adams imposed limits on shelter stays. Yo, motherfucker look like China. He up there cooking soup outside. I told y'all, Trump. I'm sorry, I'm loud. Trump literally jinxed us talking about shithole world shithole what he called other countries they call shithole countries they third world shithole countries and this is what's happening here look at this they this is a third world country you know i'm gonna keep it real this is scary 30 days for single adults and 60 days for families. According to the New York Post, the it's city crazy. just issued 4,300 notices to migrants with children, warning them that they'll need to reapply for shelter. But new arrivals are given priority, and those who don't get a spot will have to wait for space to open up, sparking fears of uncertainty. Over the weekend, lines wrapped around the block in the East Village outside the St. Bridget School on East 7th Street near Tompkins Square Park. The former Catholic school now serves as a shelter reentry facility for migrants without children, many of whom have already begun their reapplication process. There are literally hundreds every day lined up around the block, all the way to the next block and around the corner. But Man, tensions oh, flare. Ain't no Karen today. There is a problem. I'm just letting you know you call me Karen on other days, but motherfucker, I'm right about these migrants. I gotta agree with you, baby. It's a problem after one person tried to cut the line and a fight broke out. Two NYPD officers were injured in the melee and two migrants are now facing charges, including resisting arrest. All right, we're going to leave that where it lays right now, guys. We're going into two hours of the broadcast. Again, I'm hitting it hard and I've been on YouTube.